everybody, and welcome back to another week of Bulletproof Hygiene. We are super excited for you to be joining us today for story time. And today we're going to do things a little differently and start the show off with some stories. And this is going to be fun because we're going to read you the same story twice. I know that probably doesn't really sound fun, but we promise it will at least be interesting and hopefully fun, but mostly enlightening and maybe insightful. So the first version of the story will be told through the me filter mindset, as told by Sharice Wood. And the second version of the story will be the other centered mindset. As told by me, Brittany, Brittany Simon. <laughs> so I feel like we need to clarify that these are just stories that we made up. These are fictional characters and the names have been chosen at random. So if this is one of your names, we do not know you. It's all good. So now we invite you to get cozy, grab your favorite blanket, snuggle in, and here we go with story time. Once upon a morning from a practice near you, there was a hygienist named Stacy on her way to work. She was extra tired this morning as her youngest child woke during the night with a nightmare and took some time to settle and get back to sleep. Stacy decided to stop for coffee, hoping caffeine would save the day, but proceeded to spill half the hot coffee on her lap as she went to take the first sip. Apparently the lid had not been fully secured. Darn that barista. She pulled over to the side of the road using napkins to blot the hot coffee from her scrubs, trying to keep it from burning her skin. Great. Now she was tired, burned, late, and extra cranky. This is going to be a great day, she thought to herself sarcastically. As she pulled into the parking lot, she found her usual parking spot was filled by Mandy's car. Mandy was the doctor's assistant, and she seemed to always be trying to one-up everyone. Stacy got out of her car and slammed the door in frustration, having to walk a few feet further to the door, smelling like coffee with wet scrubs. This day just keeps getting better, she thought to herself. Stacy walked through the hall toward her operatory and passed Mandy along the way. Hey, Stacy, did you happen to order any more Arrestin? Dr. Jones was wanting to place some this morning on his first patient, Mandy asked. Ugh, thought Stacy. Is she kidding me right now? I haven't even put my things down and she took my spot and she's making demands of me two steps into the door. She's the worst. Um, no, Mandy, I haven't had the time to place the order this week. My schedule has been slammed. Stacy retorted harshly without making eye contact and continued down the hall. Stacy began to get her operatory set up and ready for the day. As she flipped on her computer and looked at the schedule, she saw that most her most productive patient for the day, a full mouth SRP, patient had canceled. Well, that's just great, she thought. How on earth am I going to hit goal today? About that time, Mandy stuck her head in the doorway and said, hey, Stacy, I saw that your 12 o'clock patient came off. Hopefully you can order some arrestin for us then, she asked. Sure, I'll have plenty of time, muttered Stacy in an irritated tone. At 7.30, the team converged for their morning huddle and began to review the schedule and numbers for the day. Mandy shared that Stacy hadn't ordered any arrestin last week, so they did not have any to place on their first patient. Dr. Jones looked disapprovingly at Stacy and asked her when she could make that happen. Really, Mandy? Stacy thought. Way to throw me under the bus. I'll be sure to handle it today, Dr. Jones. I'm so sorry about this, said Stacy. As they reviewed the numbers for the day, Carla, the office manager, pointed out that Stacy was under goal and asked her what she was going to do to handle it. Good grief, thought Stacy. I finally have a minute to order supplies, but they want me to somehow find someone productive to fill my schedule while I'm seeing other patients and then see them and order supplies. This is crazy. With an expression of complete defeat, Stacy mumbled. I'll look through my ASAP list to see if I can find someone. The meeting came to a close and everyone rushed out to seat their first patients and start the day. Stacy felt very frustrated and like she'd let her team down, but also very alone and like she had no support. She sat her first patient who refused x-rays due to cost and complained of sensitivity with almost every stroke of the scalar. Why am I doing this, thought Stacy. No one appreciates me, helps me, or even cares about me. This is a dead-end job and I'm so tired of it. Maybe I should consider being a barista. I'd be very good at closing lids. <laughs> My blood pressure is high right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm like, oh, this Stressful. team. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so this is a uh, the other centered mindset version. So version two of story number one. Once upon a morning, from a practice near you, there was a hygienist named Stacy on her way to work. She was extra tired this morning as her youngest child woke during the night with a nightmare and took some time to settle and get back to sleep. 
Stacy with an EY, by the way, decided to stop for coffee, hoping that caffeine would save the day, but proceeded to spill half the hot coffee on her lap as she went to take the first sip. Apparently the lid had not been fully secured. She pulled over to the side of the road using napkins to blot the hot coffee from her scrubs, trying to keep it from burning her skin. Well, this wasn't how I wanted to start my day, but at least I still have half a cup of coffee to drink and I'm not cold. Stacy thought as she chuckled and blasted her favorite song, deciding to make the best of it. As she pulled into the parking lot, she found her usual parking spot was filled by Mandy's car. Oh, wow, thought Stacy. Mandy sure is here early. Oh, that's right. She and Dr. Jones had that big case this morning. They're going to change that patient's life. We really do get to make such an impact in people's lives. Stacy walked through the hall toward her operatory and passed Mandy along the way. Good morning, Stacy. Did you happen to order any more Arrestin? Dr. Jones was wanting to place some this morning on her on his first patient, Mandy asked. Oh no, thought Stacy. I got so busy last week that it that it totally slipped my mind. Oh, Mandy, I didn't, Stacy said with surprise. I'm so sorry. I got sidetracked last week and totally whiffed. I promise I'll make it happen today. And in the meantime, maybe we could borrow some from Dr. White down the street. I'll have Carla call and ask after our meeting. No worries, said Mandy. That's a great idea. And I know how it is. We've been slammed lately too. And some days I can barely keep up. Stacy made her way to the operatory and began to set up for the day. As she flipped on her computer and looked at her schedule, she saw that her most productive patient for the day, a full mouth SRP patient had canceled. Oh no, thought Stacy. That was my big production for the day. Well, now I have some time to order and I know that Mr. Green was wanting to get in with me sooner for his periotherapy. Maybe that could work for him today. Stacy made her way down the hall to speak to Carla, the office manager, about borrowing some arrest in from Dr. White and reaching out to Mr. Green to see if he would come in in her 12 o'clock opportunity. Carla was happy to help and thanked her for her quick thinking and solutions. At 7.30, the team converged for their morning huddle and began to review the schedule and numbers for the day. Mandy shared that they were currently out of arrest and but that they were checking with Dr. White's office to see if they could borrow, borrow some and that they would be sure to get more ordered that day. As they reviewed the numbers for the day, Carla, the office manager, pointed out that Stacy was under goal, but that she had already asked her to reach out to Mr. Green to see if he would like to come during that opportunity. The meeting came to a close and everyone rushed out to seat their first patients and start the day. Stacy felt tired from her long night and a little embarrassed that she didn't order the arrest in, but knew she had the opportunity to make this a great day and that she could lean on the people around her to make it all work. She sat her first patient who refused x-rays due to cost and complained of sensitivity with almost every stroke of the scalar. She asked the patient lots of questions about their dental goals and concerns and was able to educate her patient on the benefits of x-rays and work out a payment with them to be able to meet their needs that day. She also introduced them to their, their nudie sensitizer and the patient was raving about the difference. The patient left happy and felt cared for and vowed to send her sister to the practice. Stacy walked her patient out feeling good about what she had accomplished. That was a tough patient, she thought. I had to really work hard to educate and help that patient but she saw the value and I feel good about what we get to do every day. I love being a hygienist, even on the hard days. Although sometimes I'm certain I'd be an excellent barista too. <laughs> <laughs> that was a much better version. <laughs> and that's not usually the version that I would be doing. Right, right. <laughs> but I think that's the point of this. Like, I think a lot of us get stuck in these days that not everything goes right ever. There's never a perf. I've never had a perfect day as a hygienist. Um, you know, it is so volatile because we're dealing with different team members and you have different people coming all day and it's just, it's a lot. So I think the point of these stories is to help us be more mindful of how we are approaching our day and what our mindset looks like. And, you know, hopefully you enjoyed story time. Um, and, you know, I feel like obviously we over dramatize this story a little bit, but I still feel like everybody can resonate resonate with these situations. Like these are pretty common for us. Um, and I feel like it's so much easier to think about what we should have said after the fact when it's too late, mm -hmm. the damage has been done. Um, but I want to touch on some details from the story that we might've missed, but are really important points. So I think in the first version of the story, Stacy didn't even hear Mandy say good morning. She literally just heard her name and a demand. Mm -hmm because she was already tired and stressed out, her perception of the situation was already skewed and the interaction was negative from the get-go. So in the second version, she heard good morning and realized it was a request with a true need behind it. Mm -hmm. It was still a tough to pill to swallow because she, it pointed out her error, but because she was in a more relaxed and content state, she heard it differently and was able to respond more appropriately. 
And the point there is when we're tired, angry, emotional, or sad, we filter things differently and that's normal and okay. And as a team, we've got to give each other grace during these times and be able to understand where we're coming from. And personally, I think we need to get better at being aware of our own current state and even be willing to be vulnerable and share where we're at. Because I think people don't know. People don't know that you've come in the door and you're running late and you didn't sleep and you spilled coffee on yourself and you're not in a good spot. Like there's nothing wrong with coming in and going, hey guys, I'm not, I'm not a hundred today. Can, can you help me get there? Like I'm going to need a little support. Yeah. Right. And not in a, uh, I don't know. I hate, I hate the victim. Yeah. The victim mentality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't think that's what we mean. No, but definitely just, you know, being vulnerable to the point where you are able to ask someone else for help or assistance in order to make it through the day. Um, and in order for me to be less snarky, I'm just, for me, it's a right. self-commandment. Well, and I'm curious, I, you know, again, that's a fic- fictional sp- story, but I'm so curious. The first one, she felt like Dr. Jones looked at her like disapprovingly, uh-huh. like chances are he didn't, he just looked at her, mm-hmm. you know, like it wasn't even a, a look, yeah. but we, I think we tend to take on the negative feelings that we might be experiencing at the time and then project those. Right. Like we think other people are doing that. So oh, for sure. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> make it smaller. Um, all right. So let's talk about, um, you know, I think it's hard to pull yourself out of the hard or frustrating moments and refocus. So let's talk about how we can stay in the positive in more of that other centered mindset in, in those moments, because ideally the goal is to have a great day despite the bumps and bruises, because the reality is we're going to have those regardless. Mm -hmm. So in sticking with our story time concept, we want to give 10 tips to staying positive on a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. And I titled it that because growing up as a kid, I don't know if you guys ever read the book, Alexander in the terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day, but that was a big part of my childhood. So I thought that was appropriate here. So let's kind of go through those 10 tips and just talk through those. So staying grateful is the first thing. And um, that's all the time, uh, keeping a journal is really, really powerful when it comes to staying grateful in almost any situation in life. So I don't think that, you know, when we say stay grateful, it means ignore the bad or ignore the problems or don't feel the tough feelings or don't mourn when that's appropriate or don't, um, you know, feel afraid and kind of work through those feelings and figure out how to find solutions. You know, it's not about ignoring the tough things. It's about saying, despite this, I am thankful that I have this supportive community around me, that I have supportive friends, that I have resources to help me find solutions instead of just focusing on the problem. So it keeps us focused on the great things, which can overshadow the harder, ugly things and keep us in a better mindset throughout the day. Um, The direction you think is the way that you generally continue in. Right. And I think the point of doing it all the time is important because I think if we only try to do this, like, oh, I'm in a hard place, let me... I think it's harder to pull yourself out of that. But if you're consistently, you know, focusing on the good and the good and the good and the good, then when you have that bump of bad, it's like, okay, yep, this sucks. And I don't like this right now, but I know because I'm constantly reminding myself of all the good. So like, I think when she pulled up and into the parking lot and was like, oh yeah, they have a big case today. This is like going to be a life-changing case for this patient. Like we really get to do amazing things. That's one of those kind of constantly reminding ourselves of what we do get to do in hygiene, that we really do get to help people have better lives and stay healthy and have a great smile and eat proper foods. And I mean, there's a lot of really great things that we get to do that sometimes we get lost in all of the other little things. So I think just constantly being mindful of that. Yeah. And it's kind of like, you know, you form the habit before you're in a place of turmoil or before you're in the hard position, right? You get this habitual thing and then it's not so difficult to try and put on a new hat or a better mentality when you're in not in in a not great space. So I think that the routine of that is important. I think I just, when you said that, it just made me think of when we try to stay healthy, we try to keep our immune system really healthy Mm -hmm. because then when something comes along, when COVID comes along, we're already in a good stable place so we can manage that Mm -hmm. and we can get through that without it being so difficult on us. Mm -hmm. So perfect. Um, I think step number two is to help somebody else. Because I think this takes the focus off of us and our problems or frustrations. 
um, as we put our time and energy into helping others and nothing could be more others focused than when we have the opportunity to help. So um, honestly, you think about it, every moment of our day is the opportunity to help someone. Mm -hmm. But again, we don't always frame it that way. Right. Sometimes we frame it in, oh my God, I have to do this. And this patient is late. And instead of like, hey, this is the time I have with this patient. How can I help them? How mm -hmm. can I make their day better? Um, but I think helping others feels good to us. And again, that's a point like we're in a bad place. If we're in a negative mindset, feeling good mm -hmm. is what's going to change that. And it helps us get out of our own heads. Yep. Yeah. Can you do the next one actually? Yeah. That's more you than it is me. <laughs> <laughs> so trip tip number three is to find a mantra, something positive that you say to yourself often. And I don't mean like just a garbage statement that you're going to say and hope that it works out like something true that you feel. Um, and it could be something simple as like, I get to do this. Like, this is a gift and I get to do this, or I do have a great life, or I love what I get to do. This is what a gift this is something that's true. And, and honestly, you need to pick this mantra as you're doing your grateful journaling, mm -hmm. because you want to do it out of a good place. Mm -hmm. And when you're in a good place. Um, but again, I just, I tell my kids this all the time, like the way you think is the way you go. Mm -hmm. So if you're constantly thinking, Hey, I have a good life and this is great. You're going to feel that you're going to think that so that when something pops up, that isn't great, you can be like, Hey, that's just a thing. Yeah. That's just a bump. Right. In general, life is good. And I'm going to get past this. So mantras can be good. Um, the, the fourth tip is apologize and be real, share where you're at, um, accept and give space and grace. So apologizing just helps us to pivot you know, when appropriate and, you know, making an amends or apologizing to someone is usually not about their response or their reaction. So if we can apologize, just taking responsibility for like, if I'm apologizing to someone, I'm taking responsibility for whatever my action was, even despite the way it may or may not have landed on them, because right. I might not always know if I injured someone or not, right. they bring it to my attention. But right. if I feel that on that for me, I did something that doesn't align with my values, then I want to take responsibility for that because that helps me to pivot and it helps me not to carry around the weight or the guilt or the shame or the frustration of making whatever mistake I believe that I made. Yeah. You know? So it's like, put pride and ego aside, apologize, just be real, say, you know, it wasn't my intention to right. come across this way. Um, and I'm sorry if, you know, I injured you in any way, blah, blah, blah. And then let go of the person's response is really, it, it can be very healing for the relationship. Mm -hmm. And depending on the injury, maybe sometimes not so much, but at least you won't walk around with that wound. Right. You know? Right. And I think in a crazy busy day, like we have in, mm -hmm. in dental world, like mm -hmm. I think that goes a long way because we can easily just kind of make something out of what somebody said. Mm -hmm. Again, we run it through the me filter and we're like, oh my gosh, now they hate me. Mm -hmm. And if you just quickly realize, oh my gosh, I said that pretty sharply. And you go back and say, Hey, I, I just wanted to say, I'm sorry. I think that came across harsher. Like I'm going to, I'm in a real rush right now. And I I'm just running behind. So I didn't mean that. Are we good? Mm -hmm. Like, I think those little moments make a big difference. Right. And then, like you said, having the space and grace to be like, yeah, we're cool. Mm -hmm. I get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Just like in the story when uh, Mandy said, Hey, we've been slammed too. I totally get it. Yeah. Like that's, you know, me too. It's kind of like that, you know, identifying. Yeah, I get you. We're good. Um, I think number five is move your body when you're in a bad kind of mental funk, um, take a walk, take a run, do some stretching, do some jumping jacks if you have to, but science shows that moving your body creates endorphins and this makes your brain happy and oxygen really helps too. So deep breathing is a thing. And I find myself a lot of times when I'm working on a patient, I am, I tend to have noticed that I can be kind of a shallow breather mm -hmm. and I'll catch myself and I'm like in my own head. Cause you know, at this point you can just do hygiene and not, and think about a thousand other things. Right. But in my head, I notice like, I'm not breathing very deep and I might feel tired or whatever. And I'll just like purposely like take some good deep breaths in. And I think that does a lot that we don't even realize getting yes. some oxygen, getting some water, moving your body. That's one of the best ways to kind of work yourself out of the funk. Yeah. It's funny how sometimes changing your physical state can help with your mental and emotional state as well. Um, the endorphins and the oxygen and just, just, I don't know. I feel like when you experience something in a specific state and then you continue in that physical state all day, like whether your shoulders are hunched or mm -hmm. you're not really breathing, like it just carries that energy forward. And right. then when you change it, you're like switching it, yep. you're like switching it up. And you're kind of like, it's almost like in, um, intentional, like confusion for your body and you kind of shock yourself yep. out of it, you know? Yep. 
Um, the next thing is surrounding yourself with positive people, uh, focusing on positivity with your team in the morning huddle with quotes or encouragement or acknowledgement like kudos. Um, something that I really am thankful for in our morning huddle is our kudos. And I think you guys do do mm -hmm. that too. Okay. We usually start our huddle with a quote or a thought of the day. So we have an assigned huddle master is what we okay. call it. So our, our team is very large. It's about 50 people. So we rotate who the huddle master is. And whenever it's your day, um, you show up with a thought of the day. A lot of times it is a quote or something you read in a book recently or something that you wanted to share with the team that's empowering. And then um, we proceed to kudos from the day before. If it's a you know Monday, we'll do for Friday. And just starting like that, puts everyone in like the state of gratitude mm -hmm. so that we move into the next part of the huddle and into the day before we've really experienced major issues, unless you're Stacy on the way to work that morning, <laughs> um, in, in this, in a better state, we're just starting off at neutral or above right. instead of negative, right. In the negative, you know, so it's, it's a good way to put yourself in that state as well. Yeah. Um, number seven is listen to your favorite hype music. So research shows that music stimulates emotions through certain brain circuits. Our brains are actually capable of creating new pathways to function properly. And music can provide the stimuli to help the brain rewire itself. And I find that for me, there's days that I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm feeling tired. I'm feeling sluggish. And I play, I have like a hype playlist that I'll play on the way to work. And I kind of sing with it and move with it. And by the time I get there, I really am in a better mood. I feel more awake. I'm like ready to do the day. So that can be a great way to do it too. And Stacy did that in her story where she was like, you know what? I just spilled my coffee and I'm soaking wet and this sucks. Let's make the most of it and pop on a, a T-Swift song. I don't know what, whatever you like. <laughs> For you, it would be T-Swift. It would be. <laughs> Shake it off, people. <laughs> <laughs> that was cheesy. Um, another thing is practicing self-care. So getting a massage, reading a book, having lunch with a friend, whatever you do that reduces stress and makes you feel good and happy. And this is another way to break up maybe a routine or a rut of negativity or, you know, when I get really tired or just physically not in a great space and not taking great physical care of myself, I tend not to be sleeping well. I tend not to be eating well. I tend not to be exercising as much, you know, and just even, you know, changing that pattern in some way and just do doing something to refuel and fill myself back up makes a difference. Even if it's not that day and I just take a day, I'm just done, you know, yep. and then need to recharge and sit on the couch and sit around. I think that's a healthy thing to do from time to time, probably a few times a week for yeah. all of us. Yeah. <laughs> usually doesn't happen that way, but, um, but really, really important. Yeah. Agreed. Um, number nine is share your needs with someone who can help. Don't just vent to your coworkers because this I know happens a lot where you just kind of share your frustrations, you know, with somebody who doesn't really have the ability to help you mm -hmm. um, and nothing gets fixed that way. And you're just kind of banging your head against the wall. So go to your boss, your, you know, whoever that is, your, your doctor, your office manager, whatever, and share what you need to do your job in a healthy way. Whether that's that I need more time, I need different equipment, I need more training. You've got to be your own advocate and share the benefits to the practice, not just to you personally. And I think that's a big part of any time you ask for something like that yep. is, you know, yes, I, we understand that it's something we need to do our job better, but it's going to be, it's going to hit better and probably have a better response if we can tailor it to how it's going to help the practice. Mm -hmm. So you know, hey, if I had more time with these new patients and was able to really do a full assessment and really educate, then I feel like that's going to help me enroll treatment better. That's going to help the patient understand they're not going to feel rushed. I feel like it's going to show up in our bottom line as, as we are able to enroll treatment. Mm -hmm. um, it's that owner and practice benefit of yeah, yeah. yeah. So still getting what you need just in a, in a high EQ way. Right. Well, because I don't, I don't know why our go-to is to just complain to somebody else. Cause that doesn't help us get anything we need. Right. Um, but I think that feels like the less scary way. It feels like immediate gratification, but just not long-term gratification. Right. And it's going to set us up to where we're in the same position over and over and over again. Right. So we go and, you know, gripe to this person and then nothing changes. So we gripe the next day about the same thing. And then we gripe the next day about the same thing, you know, just yep. it's the perpetual cycle. We don't want that in perpetuity. Right. And no it one, definitely no being in perpetuity. Right. It definitely keeps us in the me filter place. Mm -hmm. 
So the last thing is make sure that along the way you're celebrating wins and those around you, like the wins of those around you. This keeps momentum going and fuels your passion for what you're doing. It provides support and encouragement and it helps us hold each other up. You might have to go first. So not everyone is great at this, but it can be contagious. So kind of like being the first vulnerability domino or, or you know, if you're afraid to look silly by acknowledging yourself or saying what went great or what worked or what you troubleshot today that, that helped you and worked for you. That's a, that can be a real change of pace for some teams. And it might feel a little unusual or uncomfortable. You're flexing this new muscle of, I don't know, I guess, positivity. And, but it, a lot of times does have a domino effect, you know, just like negativity spreads like wildfire and gossip spreads like wildfire. So, so can positivity yeah. if it's consistent and, and you believe what you're saying. Yeah. And I think you have to be brave if, if that's not how your practice goes, you know, to be the first one to step out and celebrate. Everybody wants to feel acknowledged and accepted. So if you step out and say, God, Brittany, you know, I saw, I saw the, what you did yesterday production wise, that was incredible. What a win. How did you do that? That makes you feel incredible. It makes other people go, Oh, wow, that's cool. Now the danger here, and I'm going to just tell you this, cause this is going to happen is there are certain people who feel intimidated mm-hmm. by that. Mm-hmm. And they will almost, there's almost like this jealousy factor of, well, I, nobody's saying that I did anything good or I had it. I can't do that. Or I don't know how to do that. And you have to let that go because again, like you said, for apologies, like you, you're not responsible for responsible for someone else's response to that. But if you'll go first and celebrate other people around you, that motivates them to do more and be better. And then they start to see, Hey, this feels good. And then they'll celebrate other people's wins. And I try to do that a lot with my patients. Like when they come back and they've made a huge improvement with their home care and they're like, Hey, Sharissa, I've actually been flossing every day. I'm like, Oh my gosh, if I can make confetti fall from the ceiling, I would, that's incredible. And that makes them feel good. And it keeps them motivated and it keeps them going. Well, really we should be doing that to each other as a team as well, because isn't that the goal? Like, shouldn't we all be winning? Isn't that what everybody wants? Um, but yeah, not everybody's great at that. And I just, I challenge you as our listeners to kind of be like Brittany said, the first domino in that just, you know, start the momentum going forward and, you know, be the change you want to see. If you're feeling like your practice isn't where you want to be, and there's a lot of negativity and, you know, maybe, maybe your own mindset isn't great. Start with you, you know, start, get out a gratitude journal, start it this week. Um, and, and just, you know, walk, work through these steps and see what it does. Cause I guarantee you, like, there's a lot of return on investment for this stuff. A lot. <laughs> so thank you so much for spending your time with us this week. And, um, we hope that you find that other centered mindset and then you just rock it out and you have a great week. And this will be the beginning of a really great month and year and life and that your patients will benefit from all of it. So we hope everybody has a great week. Um, if you have not yet signed up for our live summit, you need to check that out because tickets are sell- selling fast and we are getting close to being sold out. So it is in Nashville, June 3rd and 4th. Brittany and I will be there together. And I don't even think we mentioned, if you're watching this on YouTube, you know, Brittany and I are together right now, which yes. is few and far between <laughs> and a special treat. We didn't mention that. We didn't mention oh, that. Yeah. Uh, Brittany's here visiting with me this weekend. We did some um, Hinman stuff. So that was cool. But um, come see us live because we'd love to hang out with you. And if you haven't checked that out, just go to bulletproof height, bulletproof summit.com and you'll get all the details. And that's it. Everybody have a great week.